What is going on? We're back with more Magic the Gathering Brothers War set review. We've done all five colors. We're getting into multicolored. If you haven't watched, if you're watching this on YouTube and you haven't seen the five mono colors, check out the description below. I'm going to have links to all those videos so you can watch them all in whatever order you please. We're currently going through all of the new cards in Brothers War, which accumulates to about 290 cards total. Uh, we've done all five colors so far, and we're just getting into multicolored. So let's jump right in it. Uh, first up, we have Arbalist Engineers for one. Uh, this is actually just a tiny bit too loud for my ear holes. Um, actually, you know what? The music can stay there. I'm going to turn down my headphones. Um, so Arbalist Engineers is one and a gruel, a red and a green for a 2-2 human artificer creature. When Arbalist Engineers enters the battlefield, choose one. Arbalist engineer Engineers deal one damage to any target, or put a 1-1 counter on target creature. It gains trample and haste until end of turn, so you can choose uh, Arbalist Engineers if you'd like, or create a tapped Power Stone token. Pretty cool. They look very fancy there, loading their colorful ammunition into their artillery machine thing uh next up we have battery bearer two green blue for a three four human artificer creature uh again these are all in set order number or set number order so they're more than likely in just alphabetical order uh based on their set number so we're going to be jumping around between colors a lot in the multicolor folder um but that's not because I set it up that way, that's just because that's the order that the set numbers go. Um, so bear with me. So Battery Bearer is two green blue for a 3-4 human artificer creature. With creatures you control have tapped to add colorless, this mana can't be spent to cast non-artifact spells. So basically turns all of your creatures into power stone tokens, but they're also creatures. Whenever you cast an artifact spell with mana value 6 or greater, draw a card, which is great. Simic uh, likes to draw cards. They like to m manipulate and um, mutate their creatures. It's great. Great card. Next up, we have Deathbloom Ritualist. That's a cool looking elf. 3 black green for a 3 5 elf warlock. This is rare. Uh, tap to add X mana of any one color where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. Pretty cool. There's a big crazy machine behind it. Then we've got Evangel of Synthesis. A blue and a black, so one Demir. For a 2-3 Phyrexian Human Cleric. Yes, clerics in Demir. Thank you, wizards. Uh, when Evangel of Synthesis enters the battlefield, draw a card, then discard a card. As long as you've drawn two or more cards this turn, Evangel of Synthesis gets plus one, plus O, oh, and has Menace. That's pretty good. Then we've got Falaji Vanguards. Vanguard, just one, not guards. Uh, two red, white for a 2-3 human soldier with first strike. When Falaji Vanguard or another creature enters the battlefield under your control, target creature gets plus two, plus O oh until end of turn. So Boros being aggro, we saw that coming, I promise. Next up, we've got Hero of the Dunes. Three and an Orzov, one white, one black. For a 3-2 human soldier, when Hero of the Dunes enters the battlefield, return target artifact or creature card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield, straight to the battlefield. No waiting in the hand for you. Creatures you control with mana value 3 or less get plus 1, plus 0. Oh. Cool. Nice little... Um, what do you call that? Weenies um, champion there. And then we've got Junkyard Genius. One uh, black, red. Uh, 
Uh, for a 2-2 human artificer, when Junkyard Genius enters the battlefield, create a tapped Power Stone token. Then for one black, red, uh, so one Anarakdos, sacrifice another creature or artifact until end of turn. Other creatures you control get plus one, plus O, oh, and gain Menace and Haste. Pretty good. Uh, then we've got Legions to Ashes, one and an Orzhov, one white, one black for a sorcery. Exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls and all tokens that player controls with the same name as that permanent. Oh, this is like anti-copy magic. So you get to exile a permanent, a powerful one, and then assuming that they've made a bunch of copies of it, you can exile all the tokens that are copies of it as well. Um, and if I'm reading this right, this can mean all of the power stones that a player has. You can exile all of them. Because the first one doesn't say non-token, non-land permanent. It just says exile target non-land permanent. So you exile one of their power stones. And it exiles all of the power stones that they have. Because it, they all share a name. It's cool. I've never seen anti-copy magic before. Very, very cool. Um, next we have Mishra claimed by Gix. Two black and a red for a 3-5 Phyrexian human artificer legendary creature. Whenever you attack, each opponent loses X life and you gain X life where X is the number of attacking creatures. <laughs> oh my god. Um, if Mishra claimed by Gix and a creature named Phyrexian dragon engine are attacking and you both own and control them... Exile them to meld them into Mishra lost to Phyrexia. It enters the battlefield tapped and attacking. So that, um, we unfortunately have to go back to, I believe, red. For some reason, I put it in this folder. Mishra lost to Phyrexia is a legendary artifact Phyrexian artificer creature. Sorry, it is a 9-9. And whenever Mishra lost to Phyrexia enters the battlefield or attacks, choose three of these. Target opponent discards two cards, or Mishra deals three damage to any target, or destroy target artifact or planeswalker, or creatures you control gain menace and trample until end of turn, or creatures you don't control get minus one, minus one until end of turn, or create two tapped power stone tokens. And you get to create pick three of these. Not just one, not two, but three. So you are you can make your opponent discard two. You can deal three damage to something. You can destroy their planeswalker. You can give everything you control menace and trample. You're already attacking. So giving everything trample. Or you can kill all of their tokens or make all of their stuff weaker and their blocks bad. Or you can get two power stone tokens. That is crazy. I feel like all of these meld cards are just like panic removal. Like you have to remove that card before it can meld. Otherwise you're doomed. All, all of them are super powerful and super cool. Um, but I don't think that they're going to be cast or melded that often because it's going to be very difficult to, you have to get, the Misha card and the Phyrexian Dragon Engine on the battlefield, which is already like eight mana. And then you have to successfully attack with both of them. And then you can meld them into Misha lost to Phyrexia. There's a lot of steps in between those things that um, someone can mess things up a little bit. So... Mishra claimed by Gix is four mana. The dragon engine is three mana. Uh, Mishra is going to come in with summoning sickness. So turn three, you cast the dragon engine. Turn four, you cast Mishra. By the time turn five comes around, your opponent has to have figured out a way to remove one of them. Preferably Mishra because Mishra just drains life every time it attacks. Um... And if your opponent doesn't, and you manage to meld it, it's pretty. It's like game over. I don't... That's just, you reach for the concede button on Arena, you reach out your hand in person, you just shake their hand and say, good game. 
Sheesh. That is, you just have to stop it. It is an engine. The nice thing about these meld cards is that you kind of, you have to see them coming, especially in constructed. Like if you're playing limited, there's a chance that your opponent is playing one or two, one of these pieces, but they don't have the other piece because they're all good cards on their own, right? Um, Titania is a good card on its own. The legendary land that Titania melts with is a good card on its own. The dragon engine is okay, but it's not great. Mishra is amazing. This card is super powerful, super aggro. Um, so in limited, there's a chance that they don't have the other piece, so they're never going to meld. But if you're playing constructed and you see any of these meld cards, like you just have to get rid of it. You have to. That has to be your game plan immediately. Um, so they're telegraphed. The The end game becomes extremely telegraphed at that point. Um, which is good. Because you immediately know what you need to do. You don't know if they have any protection spells or anything like that. But you do know that that's going to be their plan. Um, and they're going to execute that plan as soon as possible. Because they know... That as soon as they've played one of these meld cards that they've now painted a target on that card the next multicolor card is um older mishra before being claimed by gix um we've seen teenage mishra this is older mishra middle age or midlife crisis mishra tamer of makfawa so makfawa is the native name for the dragon engine that um mishra melts with so tamer of makfawa is three black and a red for a four four human artificer legendary creature token token legendary creature card with permanence you control have ward sacrifice a permanent all permanents you control have ward your opponents have to sacrifice something in order to target it with a spell each artifact card in your graveyard has unearth for one black and red that's pretty great then we've got queen kaya bin krug who is the queen of krug who Ursh urza marries to become the prince of krug at one point then he becomes the king of krug um queen kaya kayla is one red white for a 2-3 human noble legendary creature for four mana and tap discard all the cards in your hand then draw that many cards you may choose an artifact or creature card with mana value one you discard it this way then do the same for artifact and creature cards with the mana value two and three and return those cards to the battlefield activate only as a sorcery so if you have queen Ka kayla on the battlefield you have say five cards in your hand but you have an artifact that's mana value one an artifact that's mana value two an artifact that's mana value three you pay four tap kayla you throw out your five card hand and then you put all three of those artifacts onto the battlefield and you get to draw five more cards that's pretty crazy i think it's really interesting too because there is this specter of an artifact, like a weapons and equipment deck out there. There was one or two cards in the last set that were could be really powerful in an artifact, um, in an equipment deck. And this is not only in the same colors, so Boros, but... It, it helps you filter your hand and put um, equipment onto the battlefield for free, basically. So I think Queen Kayla and I cannot for the life of me remember the artifact and equipment and vehicles guy from Dominar United because they never got played because there's not enough... Um, equipment 
um, there will be enough equipment once this set comes out because there's tons of artifacts and equipments, uh, which we will get to shortly. Time to move on. Um, next up, we have Sahili. Sahili's back. Filigree Master as a Planeswalker. Two blue, red for a legendary Planeswalker with three loyalty counters. Plus one, you get to scry one. You may tap an untapped artifact you control if you do draw a card so you can scry one and then draw a card if you have an untapped artifact uh sahili's minus two is create two one one colorless thopter artifact creature tokens with flying they gain haste until end of turn and then minus four with you get an emblem that says artifact creatures you control get plus one plus one and artifact spells you cast cost one less to cast so you can play them on turn four, immediately plus one them, and then next turn you get a, an artifact creature anthem plus artifact creature um, cost reduction, which is pretty cool. It's a cool uh, Planeswalker. I don't know if it's worth um, Mythic or a four drop slot, to be honest, but uh, I think it'll be fun. It'll be a good card and limited for sure. Uh, next up, we have Sarenth the Great Worm. Four red and a green for a 7-6 mythic worm creature with trample. Whenever land enters the battlefield, create a tapped power stone token. This is just mana ramp dot card. Um, every time you put a land into play, you get a free power stone token, uh, which is really cool. Next up, we have Skyfisher Spider. This is terrifying. Two black and a green for a 3-3 three, three spider creature with reach. Whenever spy Skyfisher Spider enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice another creature. When you do, destroy target non-land permanent. Wow. So you can pay for sacrifice something else. You get a 3-3 three, three spider with reach and destroy a no target non-land permanent. When Skyfisher Spider dies, you may gain one life for each creature card in your graveyard. If you do, exile Skyfisher Spider from your graveyard. Cool. Then we have Taunos the Toy mo Toy mo Moiker. Toy Maker. Um, Taunos was actually talked about in previous cards. There was a green card and a couple of blue cards, I believe, that talked about uh, Taunos. Um... They are three green and a blue for a 3-5 human artificer legendary creature at rare. Whenever you cast a beast or bird creature spell, you may copy it, except the copy is an artifact in addition to its other types. Interesting. Cool. So he makes uh, beast and bird toys. Pretty awesome. Next up, we have third path iconoclast with this cool... Uh, laser scythe thing purple fire it's scary either way um third path iconoclast is one blue one red for a two one human monk whenever you cast a non-creature spell create a one one colorless soldier artifact creature token interesting Next up, we have Takasia, Dixite Mentor. So this is Urza and Mishra's mentor. Um, they get their own card, which is cool. Uh, for one green, white, blue, you get a 4-3 legendary creature, human artificer. With creatures you control, have vigilance and tap to surveil one. Again, surveilling is looking at the top card of your library. You may put that card in your graveyard or leave it on top of your library. Then for two... Green, green, white, white, blue, blue. You can exile Tokasia from your graveyard and return any number of target artifact cards with total mana value 10 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Whoa. So this is like end game. You, you've been battling away. Everyone's close to dying. Everyone's holding on for dear life. Um, your Tokasia has died, but you've played and had killed a bunch of artifacts throughout the course of the game then you just pay 10 six actually it's only eight you pay eight mana and you get to return 10 mana values worth of artifacts from your graveyard to the battlefield that's game 
that's a big swing. That's a, a I think of the advantage bar on the old Magic the Gathering um, competitive broadcast. That's that swings the advantage bar into your favor or whoever casts this favor. That's cool. Uh, next up, we've got Urza, Lord Protector. So this is Urza um, in their midlife crisis after they've become the leader of Krug. It is their meld card. So Urza, Lord Protector is one white and a blue for a 2-4 legendary creature, human artificer, artifact, instant, and sorcery spells you cast cost one less to cast. For seven mana, if you both own and control Urza, Lord Protector, and an artifact named the Mightstone and Weakstone, exile them and meld them into Urza Planeswalker. Activate only as a sorcery. Now, I have... I do not have the stones. Let me look. I have them somewhere. There we go. The Mightstone and the Weakstone is a five mana legendary artifact our stone when the might stone and weak stone enters the battlefield choose one draw two cards or target creature gets minus five minus five until end of turn so it's five mana for um a power stone deal five damage basically um it also gets around just indestructive properties because it's minus five minus five not just straight deal five damage or you can draw two cards um, this is a pretty decent artifact on its own it's like a meteor um but better um and then as a standalone artifact it's tapped to add two colorless mana can't be spent to cast non-artifact spells pardon me my throat is getting a little scratchy um so this is the same as all of the power stone artifact tokens it you can use this mana to pay for taxes, to pay for activated abilities, to pay for ward, to pay for artifact creatures, for artifact um, spells. Uh, you can't use it to cast normal creatures um, or normal spells that aren't artifact related. But the Mightstone and Weakstone merge with Urza. Um, sorry, melts with Urza. So let's jump back to Urza real quick. Um, Urza, Lord Protector. So you pay seven mana. If you both own and control Lord Protector and an artifact named Mightstone and Weakstone, which we just looked at, exile them both and meld them into Urza Planeswalker. Urza Planeswalker is Urza Planeswalker. This is, again, the meld card. The two cards um, go from two cards in play to two cards on top of one another to create one giant card and the urza one unlike um, his brother mishra who was a creature urza is a planeswalker so you see there it has a white blue color identity so we still know that it has a color identity um urza planeswalker enters the battlefield with seven loyalty you may activate the loyalty abilities of urza planeswalker twice each turn rather than only once so again much like Mishra um, and much like Titania, you don't want these meld cards to happen. All of these, all of their abilities, all of these melded cards are super powerful, super scary, and it's going to be nearly impossible to win the game if you let them meld. Um, and Urza Planeswalker is absolutely no exception to that. You can activate their loyalty abilities twice each turn rather than only once. So you can do any of these twice. So plus two, artifact, instant, and sorcery spells you cast this turn, cost two less to cast, you gain two life. You can do this twice. So everything costs four less to cast, and you gain four life. Or you could plus one, draw two cards, then discard a card. You can do that twice. Draw four cards, discard two. For zero, create two one one colorless soldier artifact creature tokens. You can do that twice and create four of them instead. You could do minus three, which is exile target non land permanent. You could do you can exile two. Minus ten artifacts and planeswalkers you control gain indestructible until end of turn, and then destroy all non land permanents. 
So this is kind of storytelling in its finest on Magic Card. Um, all of these things kind of lead up to the end of the Brothers' War where Urza uses the Silex to then destroy everything. And Krug is completely ruined, devastated. All of the living, th most of the living things die. Um, so you can immediately get this. If you play this card and then do the plus two twice, you immediately get this to 11 loyalty. So on your next turn, all of your artifacts and planeswalkers become indestructible. So they don't die. And then everything else gets blown up. So you board wipe. And at the end of the board wipe, you still have all of your artifacts and, and this planeswalker. Or other planeswalkers, if you have other planeswalkers. This is a huge ultimate. It's very quick to get to it. Um... Again, like I said, there's a lot of lead up to these meld cards. So there's a lot of instances and moments for your opponent to stop you from this plan, which is why it makes sense that being able to ultimate Urza is fairly quick and fairly cheap and pretty easy to do. Because the chances of you getting there is rare. The chances of it happening at the time you want it to is also rare. Um, Hopefully you get there, but hopefully you're not playing against me if you do. So we'll jump back. Um, here's Urza, Prince of Krug. This is um, this is midlife Urza. Uh, this is after they've partnered with Kayla. They've become the Prince of Krug. They basically forced this wedding in order for Urza to have access to the greatest academics, the resources, the... The workbenches, all of the best artificers in the world are from Krug. And Urza wanted the power and ability to create and do whatever he wanted. Um, so Urza, Prince of Krug, is two white and a blue for a 2-3 human artificer legendary creature. And it has an artifact creature anthem for 2-2. Two, two. So all artifact creatures you control get plus 2, plus 2. And then for six mana, you can create a token that's a copy of target artifact you control, except it's a 1-1 soldier in addition to its other types. So you want to act or copy artifacts that have... Either you copy huge artifacts that have great activated abilities, or enters the battlefield abilities even, or you copy um, normal artifacts that aren't creatures and turn them into creatures because then you can start piling on um buffs onto that creature you can turn all your power stones into soldiers basically and create this army of artifacts next up we have yoshin descendant dissident sorry for a green and a white, you get a 1-1 one, one human artificer. Whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature you control. That's pretty good. Uh, then we've got Yoshin Tactician. Two white and blue for a 3-4 human soldier. Other soldiers you control get plus one, plus one. Nice little soldier anthem. Then we've got Blade Coil Serpent. X and six. Or a 5-4 artifact creature serpent at mythic. That is... This is a very interesting card design because even though it says X6, it actually matters what colors you're spending to cast this. So when Blade Coil Serpent enters the battlefield, for each two blue pips spent to cast it, draw a card. So if you cast this for... I don't know. Say you pay all six in blue. You get to draw three cards. You get a 5-4 for six. Great. That's actually a really good card on its own. Then we look further and it says, When Blade Coil Serpent enters the battlefield for each black pip spent to cast it, each opponent discards a card. So say you spent um, four, four blue and two black to pay the six. That means you get to draw two cards 
and your opponent has to discard a card, and you get a 5-4 Serpent. Awesome. Great card. Then we go even further. When Blade Cull Serpent enters the battlefield for each red red spent to cast it, it gets plus one, plus zero, and gains trample until end of turn. So this is the reason why there's an X in the casting cost. X can be zero. You don't have to pay X ever. But if you wanted to pay all of your mana, you could potentially draw a bunch of cards, make your opponent discard a bunch of cards, and give this creature plus one and trample and haste until end of turn. So this is a very versatile card. It plays in any of these decks. If you're mono blue, this is a decent card to play. If you're mono black, the same goes. Mono red, a little bit less, I think. Um, but still, if you're just paying the six mana cost and not putting extra into the X, this is just a good card. Six mana for a five four. It's not fantastic, but it's playable. It's decent. And if you manage to trigger any of these, it becomes a great card. So I think it's worth looking at. Next up, we've got Clay Champion X and four for a two, two artifact creature construct at mythic again. And these are hitting the other two. So this one was uh, the Grixis colors, blue, black, and red. This one is sort of the same deal, but the other two colors, green and white. So Clay Champion enters the battlefield with three 1-1 one, one counters on it for each green green spent to cast it. So if you cast it for four, um, <clears throat> sorry, if you cast it for four green, um, this enters the battlefield as a, oh God, an 8-8? Eight, eight? No, that can't be right. Oh my God, no. Play Champion enters the battlefield with three 1-1 one, one counters on it for each green green spent to cast in. Oh my god, it's, it is true. So if you cast this for four green mana, this enters as an 8-8. Eight, eight. For four green mana. That's not, that's not okay. This card is not okay. Uh, when Clay Champion enters the battlefield, choose up to two other target creatures you control for each green green spent to cast it. Put a 1-1 one, one counter on each of them. So that's a little less crazy. But if you cast this for four green and four white, because you can pay into that X cost indefinitely, um, then this enters as an 8-8 eight, eight, and you get to put a 1-1 one, one counter on two creatures. Or one creature, if you wanted. Pretty cool. Next up, we have Hajar Loyal Bodyguard. This is cool looking Dark Souls boss. Uh, for red and a green, you get a 3 3 human soldier, legendary creature. Sacrifice Hajar. Creatures you control get plus one, plus oh, and gain indestructible until end of turn. Aww. He's like a really powerful selfless savior. That's cute. Kind of wish he was a dog, though. Next up, we have Harbin Vanguard Aviator for a white and a blue. You get a 3-2 human soldier, legendary creature with a flying. Whenever you attack with five or more soldiers, creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and gain flying until end of turn. Cool. So it turns all your soldiers into flying soldiers. That are a little bit buffer and that is the end of the multicolored we can jump right into colorless um so these are all artifacts it's going to be quite a bit of artifacts in this set considering um a lot of the artifacts did have a color identity however so each of the colored sets that we were going through had a bunch of artifacts in it but these are all of the artifacts that don't have a color identity so first up is aeronauts wings again we're looking for equipments because of that previous card from the last set that didn't really do anything because there wasn't a lot of equipments and then you've got kayla in this set that brings artifacts that you discard onto the battlefield for free um equipments are going to play a big role in this set 
Aeronaut's Wings is two mana for an artifact equipment. Equip creature gets plus one, plus oh, and has flying. And its equip cost is two. Pretty decent. Good, good piece of equipment. Next up is Argivian Avenger. For six mana, you get a five, five artifact creature shapeshifter. For one mana, until end of turn, Argivian Avenger gets minus one, minus one, and gains your choice of flying, vigilance, death touch, or haste. Okay. I mean, so you can do this four times and give it everything? You could give it flying, vigilance, death touch, and haste? You play it for six, you pay four into this, it becomes a 1-1 one, one with flying, vigilance, death touch, and haste. I don't know why you would want to do that, but just in case. Then we've got Cityscape Leveler. Look at this crazy looking thing. Holy. For eight mana, you get an 8-8 eight, eight artifact creature construct with Trample. When you cast this spell, and whenever Cityscape Leveler attacks, destroy up to one target non-land permanent. Its controller creates a tapped Power Stone token, and you can unearth it for eight? Wow. It's interesting that you get to destroy a target non-land permanent just by casting it. It doesn't have to succeed. It doesn't, it's not an enters the battlefield a t uh, um, trigger. It's a cast trigger. Next up, we have energy refractor for two mana. You get an artifact when energy refractor enters the battlefield, draw a card. Then you pay two, add one mana of any color. Not great, um, but if your artifact count matters in your deck, uh, pay two, draw a card is kind of good. And it just counts towards an artifact. Goblin Firebomb for one colorless artifact with flash. Pay seven, tap it, sacrifice Goblin Firebomb, destroy target permanent. So you can flash it in for one. Um, and then pay seven. So you're doing this on turn eight or beyond. Um, but you could just destroy target permanent. Levitating statue. Two colorless for an artifact with flying. An artifact with flying. Okay. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put a 1-1 one, one counter on levitating statue. It's still not a creature. Then you can pay two. Not then, but you can also pay two. Levitating statue becomes a 1-1 construct artifact creature until end of turn. So it's a creature that they can't target as a creature because on their turn, it's just going to be an artifact. But counters don't leave artifact creatures when they become artifacts. So all the counters that you're putting on it still met. It's almost like a vehicle in this sense. It's too... You just pretend that two mana is its crew cost, and it's the same thing. Speaking of vehicles, oh, this isn't a vehicle. This looks like a vehicle. Liberator, Urza's Battle Thopter. Look at it's just got a giant Urza face on the front of it. That's marketing. That's marketing right there. For three colorless, you get a one, two legendary artifact creature, Thopter, with flash and flying. You may cast colorless spells and artifacts as though they had flash. Whenever you cast a spell in the amount of, if the amount of mana spent to cast that spell is greater than Liberator Urza, Urza's Battle Thopter's power, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Liberator. Oh, cool. So the more, it's almost like training, um, but for a giant Battle Thopter. Interesting. It's also interesting because this lets you cast artifact spells and colorless spells as though they had flash. And we've talked a lot about your opponent trying to disrupt your plan to meld. You could cast uh, the power, the might stone and weak stone with flash. If you have liberator Urza's battle thopter out. So you can just wait until your opponent is tapped out. Maybe. Flash in Mightstone and Weakstone, meld them into the Planeswalker, and then they need to find a way to destroy a Planeswalker. That's pretty tricky. 
Uh, next up, we've got Mine Worker. Not your worker, it's Mine Worker. Uh, for two mana, you get a 2 1 artifact creature assembly worker. Tap uh, Mine Worker. You gain one life. If you control creatures named Power Plant Worker and Tower Worker, you gain three life instead. Cool, they're like a little team. Next up, oh, we've got Portal to Phyrexia. Nine mana for an artifact. When Portal to Phyrexia enters the battlefield, each opponent sacrifices three creatures. Holy. At the beginning of your upkeep, put target creature card from your graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. It's a Phyrexian in addition to its other types from a graveyard onto the battlefield. This is a nine mana artifact that needs to be destroyed immediately. I play um, Cruelty of Gix in standard a lot. And that is a card that as soon as you play it, either your opponent concedes or they try to kill it right away. And this is way worse. Cruelty of Gix, I only get to pick it one creature. This is at the beginning of your upkeep every turn. Yeesh. Oh, this is another one of the buddies. Power Plant Worker for 5 mana, 4-4 four, four, Artifact Creature Assembly Worker. Pay 3, Power Plant Worker gets 2-2 two, two until end of turn. If you control creatures named Mind Worker and Tower Worker, put 2 1-1 one, one counters on Power Plant Worker instead. Activate only each, once each turn. Oh, okay. So if you control the other two, you get to put counters on it. But if you don't control the other two, it's just a buff until end of turn. Cool. Then we've got Reconstructed Thopter. For three colorless, you get an artifact creature Thopter with power and toughness 2-1. It has flying and unearth 2. Pretty okay. Pretty okay. And we've got Slagstone Refinery. Or colorless for an artifact when Slagstone Refinery or another non-token artifact you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield or is put into exile from the battlefield, create a tapped Power Stone token. So, four mana, anything you control that dies or leaves the battlefield uh, creates you a tapped Power Stone token. Not too bad. Spectrum Sentinel. Oh, I think this is the guy that... that um, you got the pet for on Arena. Spectrum Sentinel is one mana for a 1-2 artifact creature soldier. And it has protection from multicolored. Interesting. Whenever a non-basic land enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, you gain one life. Huh. Cool. Then we have the Stasis Coffin. This is like the worst My Chemical Romance album name ever. Uh, three colorless for a legendary artifact. Pay two, tap it, exile the stasis coffin. You gain protection from everything until your next turn. Oh, you go into the stasis coffin. Okay, I get it. I get it. What does the flavor text say? Thanos built it to be absolutely impermeable to any force inside. Luckily, it worked for any force outside as well. All right. Steel Exemplar. I love these artifact wizards. They look so cool. Uh, they look like Overwatch characters or something. Five colorless for a 4-4 four, four artifact creature wizard with Trample. Steel Exemplar enters the battlefield with two 1-1 one, one counters on it unless two or more colors of mana were spent on it. So this guy wants you to cast it with colorless mana. It wants you to use your Power Stone tokens. The Stone Brain. Um, the Stone Brain is two colorless for a legendary artifact. A2, tap it, exile the Stone Brain, choose a card name. Search target opponent's graveyard, hand, and library for up to four cards with that name and exile them. That player shuffles, then draws a card for each card exiled from their hand this way. Activate only as a sorcery. So for four mana total, you could disrupt their whole plan you could exile all of the mishras all of the urzas um that's pretty crazy i've never known a stoned person's brain to do something that intricate that's all i'm saying actually no scratch that there's lots of very high functioning stone people 
Stone Retrieval Unit. Four colorless for a 2-3 artifact creature construct. When Stone Retrieval Unit enters the battlefield, create an untapped power or create a tapped power stone token. Cool. Su Chi Cave Guard. Eight colorless for an 8-8 eight, eight artifact creature construct with vigilance and ward four. When Su Chi Cave Guard dies. Add 8 colorless mana to your mana pool. Until end of turn, you don't lose this mana as steps and phases end. Supply Drop. 3 colorless for an artifact with flash. When Supply Drop enters the battlefield, target creature you control gets plus 2, plus 2 until end of turn. Then you can pay for, tap it, sacrifice it, and draw a card. So you can save something on one turn and then sacrifice it and draw a card on the next or right away. Um, new armament, fresh provisions, and best of all, dry socks. Heck yeah, supply drops. Then we've got Swift Gear Drake. Okay, so, so it turns out there's not a lot of artifact equipment in this set. Um, Swift Gear Drake, five a colorless for two four artifact creature Drake with flying and haste. When Swift Gear Drake enters the battlefield, Put up to one target card from a graveyard onto the bottom of an, its owner's library. So it doesn't have flash, so you can't do this in response to something. But if you did have, um, what you do hicker out? This guy, Liberator, you could play it as if it had flash and do it in response. But for now, it's just flying in haste, and you get to remove something from someone's graveyard, put it at the bottom of their library. Then we have the Symmetry Matrix. Very symmetrical. Uh, for four colorless, you get an artifact. Whenever a creature with power equal to its toughness enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay one if you do draw a card. Achieving perfection is simple. Watch, I'll do it twice, says Mishra who out of the two brothers is the more chaotic and messy one. Interesting. Interesting they chose Mishra for that quote. Oh, look at this guy's metal alligator suit. This is Dark Souls boss right here. Thran power suit. Two mana for an artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus one for each aura and equipment attached to it and has ward two. Yo... This is going to break that Dwarf Equipment deck. Oh god. The Brunor deck in Modern officially is broken. Officially. It gets a plus one plus one for each aura and equipment attached to it. It's already going to have like four equipments attached to it. Let alone auras. And it gives, gives it ward too. That sucks. Next up, we have Thran Spider. I just have nightmares of a dwarf wearing this weird alligator metal suit now, and I'm never going to be able to destroy it. Uh, Thran Spider is three colorless for an artifact creature spider with reach. It's a 2-4. I neglected to mention that. Uh, when Thran Spider enters the battlefield, you and target opponent each creature each create a tapped power stone token. Sure. Then for seven, you may look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal an artifact card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Interesting. Pay seven, look at the top four. That's not very good. Tower Worker. Is this the last of the three dudes? Um, for three mana... You get a 1-3 artifact creature assembly worker with reach. Tap it to add colorless. If you control creatures named mind worker and power plant worker, add three mana instead. That's pretty cool. I like that they made this little trio. Um, it's fun. And that's it for the colorless stuff. We can jump into lands really quick too because we've been going... Um, going steady and there's not a lot of uh, special lands in this set of course we've got Argoth Sanctum of Nature which is the 
It's not legendary, actually. It's just a land. Argoth Sanctum of Nature enters the battlefield tapped unless you control a legendary green creature. Taps to add a green. You can pay two and two, green green. Tap it to create a 2-2 two, two bear creature token. Then mill three cards. And then it melds with Titania to become um, Gaia Incarnate, which is scary. And then we've got the... Battle for Battlefield Forge, which is a pain land. Um, it comes in untapped. You tap it for colorless mana, or you can tap it for Boros, and it deals one damage. One of Boros, and it deals one damage to you. The um, Dominar United had five of the pain lands. Brothers War is going to have the other five of the color pairs. Um, in the pain lands blast zone which is a land not legendary again blast zone enters the battlefield with a charge counter on it tap to add colorless pay xx tap it to put x charge charge counters on blast zone then pay three tap it sacrifice blast zone destroy each non-land permanent with mana value equal to the number of charge counters on blast zone that is crazy blast zone is huge and we've got Brushland, the Selesnia Pain Land. Pretty cool. Love the trenches on that. Demolition Field. Land with tap to add colorless. Pay to tap it. Sacrifice Demolition Land. Destroy target non-basic land an opponent controls. That land's controller may search their library for a basic land. Put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle. You may search your library for a basic land card. Put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle. So this is uh, Field of Ruin. Um, just demolition field. Pretty good. Pretty good. And we've got an, a new Evolving Wilds, which is uh, basically Gaia being destroyed. Um, not Gaia. Uh, Argoth. Argoth being destroyed. Uh, again, Evolving Wilds is tap to sacrifice it. Search your library for a basic land card. Put it onto the battlefield. Tap to then shuffle. Flavor text here says, there's a certain beauty in destruction. Some will consider this war a masterpiece, says Ashnod, who literally sews corpses together for a living. But let's not take their advice. Uh, then we've got Fortified Beachhead, an Azorius land. As Fortified Beachhead enters the battlefield, you may reveal a soldier card from your hand. Fortified Beachhead enters the battlefield tapped unless you reveal the soldier card this way or you control a soldier. Tap to add white or blue. Pay five, tap it. Soldiers you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn. Cool. Halls of Tagsin. Tap it to add colorless. Pay one, tap it to add one mana of any color, so filter your mana. You can pay for tap it to create a tapped power stone token. Lanawar Wastes is the Golgari pain land. Um, and this art in this land is sad because this is the moment that Urza set off the Silex outside of Krug and, uh, you know, this, I can never, Argoth is the name of the place. Argoth uh, is destroyed in the aftermath, even though they are kind of like a third party to the war. Um, the flavor text reads, The Silex Blast marked not only the end of the war, but the end of Dominaria as most knew it. Including this little fairy, who's about to be turned into vapor dust or some creepy fallout creature. Then we've got Mishra's Foundry. Tap to add colorless. Pay two. Mishra's Foundry becomes a 2 2 assembly worker, artifact creature until end of turn. It's still a land. Pay one. Tap it. Target attacking assembly worker gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Then we've got Tokasia's Dig Site. Tap it to add colorless or pay three. Tap it to surveil one. Then we've got Underground River, which is the Demir Pain, pain Land. Um, this one says the war polluted the land, turning what had been once fruitful fields into fetid morasses of mud and rusted corpses. 
a quote from the Antiquities War. And that's it for the... I wonder why they made... It seems like there's one standout, and that is the... Weird Azorius land. Fortified Beachhead. I find it so odd that... Um, they have one cool comes in untapped if you control a soldier land, but they don't but they don't have others, like that's it. I'm just scrolling through the list of revealed things to make sure I didn't miss anything. Hmm. Yeah. That seems like it. And then we get into the basic lands. The full art basics for this set look amazing. Um, lots of cool mechs, lots of cool Dominaria, ancient landscapes. Um, here's the, there's two of each color, so collect as many as you can. Here's the first planes and the second planes. This one's really cool. This one reminds me of um, Wild Wild West, the big mechanical spider walking through the desert. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, this island is really cool. This uh, Colossus just standing in the middle of the waves with its floodlights on. And then this one is, I think they're doing like one Mishra, one Urza mech on each of the lands. I could be mistaken, but so far it's been uh, very evident that like this one is a Mishra mech and this one is an Urza mech. And then we've got swamps. This one is obviously a Mishra mech. And then the swamp with the Urza mech on it is pretty cool. I think I like the Mishra one better on this one, though. And then we've got mountains. This is obviously Urza's mech with the filigree and the knight armor looking thing. And then we've got the mountain for the Mishra mech. And it's got this creepy dragon thing just sitting on top of this mountain. That is very cool art. They've obviously like burnt down the whole forest on the mountain already. That might be the best. It's strange to say that that might be the best art. It's on a mountain, I know. But then we've got forest. This cool Urza mech walking through the forest. That's very ominous looking. And then we've got the um, Piotr art for this land set. And this is the Mishra forest. Mishra mech forest. And this is really cool as well. Um, I really love them. I think maybe the uh, island with the head. Yeah. I like this one quite a bit. I love waves and lightning. It's very hard to like. My favorite land um, like ever printed is the Midnight Hunt black and white lands. But it's the one with the wizard standing on a rock in the middle of these waves. And he's like throwing lightning bolts. That one's my favorite. Um, 